Hi, welcome to another episode of Swaraj's Stand Point. Last night's violence in Bengaluru, which almost had the house of the Congress MLA, the Dalit MLA burned, the vandalization of the police station, the property that was burned worth lakhs and crores. It raises another important question. What is that question? I'll come to that. But before you feature, move on in the video, I would request you to check out two videos, one done by Nishtha Anushri, another by Amar Govind Rajan. These two videos, they're focused on the number of aspects of the riots, what led to the riots, what furthered the riots, and what are the ways to possibly deal with the writers. So if you haven't already, I'll put the link in the description and you must see those videos. Now coming to the important question, what does the last night events reflect about the idea of Dalit Muslim unity? Now, the idea of Dalit Muslim unity, why is it propagated? Since 1947, there has been this idea that the Dalits and the Muslims must come together because somehow their social interests are similar and together they can form a significant political block which the leaders cannot ignore. Since 2014, this idea has further gained merit with the emergence of Narendra Modi, with the emergence of Amit Shah, with the emergence of BJP. So what happens with the Dalit Muslim unity idea now? It's seen as a block against the fascist BJP government or the fascist Narendra Modi. But how much merit is there to this idea? There are three issues I'll address one by one. One, what do the prominent Dalit leaders think about this idea? Two, the numerous instances which prove that this entire idea is a sham. And three, what we can look for as the future of the Dalit Muslim unity. Is there a future or not? Now let's come to the first aspect. Tell me that one recent event in history which had which showcased the fault lines between Hindus and Muslims as prominently as no other event has done in the recent past. It was the CA. It was the anti-CA protest, the protest against the Citizenship Amendment Act in February and March 2020. So where were the prominent Dalit leaders then? Former UP chief minister and a prominent Dalit leader, perhaps one of the strongest Dalit leaders in the country, Mayawati. She wasn't very vocal against it. Former Dalit chief minister of Bihar, uh, Jitan Ram Manji, he wasn't very vocal against it. In fact, he cancelled his rally with OAC which was supposed to be against the governments on CAA. A number of Dalit leaders actually came forward in support of the CAA, barring one whose name is Chandrasekhar Azad. And he made headlines, he made the news, he made the mainstream media somehow trying to say that this is the time for Dalit and Muslims to come together. But his idea did not find many takers. And perhaps it was the lack of credibility in his idea that made sure that the prominent Dalit leaders stay away. But that's just one aspect. Let's go back in time. Let's look at the number of instances the, of violence between the two communities. I've noted down a few actually. Just very recently, there was news about Muslim barbers in Moradabad refusing to give a haircut to Dalits or shave because they said that their towels and the equipments will be dirty and they cannot treat the other Muslim customers with the same equipment. That was one instance. Another instance in Begu Surai, the Muslims attacked a Dalit household and they forced them to sell that. So the Dalit family had to move out of Beku Surai. In a third instance, a Dalit man was murdered because he married a Muslim neighbor but refused to convert. So, so much for Dalit Muslim identity. You may want to marry a Muslim being a Dalit, but unless you do not convert, you'll be killed. That was another aspect. One of the most horrendous incidents in January 2018, a Dalit girl accused a Muslim boy, a young Muslim boy of stalking her, of eve tasing her. What happened to that girl? She was gang raped by that very same boy and his associates. A video was also made. Similar fate was uh, encountered by a 17 year old Dalit girl, a minor Dalit girl who was raped by five men in Uttar Pradesh's Muzaffar Nagar district. In both the cases of the gang rape, a video was made and threatened to make public. Arrests were made in that case, but that just shows the fault lines between the Dalit and the Muslims as a whole. But somehow this idea is propagated every now and then. Every now and then we see an emergence of this idea because it's seen as the tool to stop the emergence of the BJP, of the Narendra Modi government, of Amit Shah. But let's come a bit further into this aspect. SDPI has been accused, there's been evidence against SDPI, a political front of PFI, 
for engineering last night's riots in Bengaluru. Where was PFI last year in October 2019? Well, in Bangalore itself, it organized an event which was the Dalit Muslim Dialogue. What were the conclusions of that uh, dialogue of that event, just which happened 10 months ago? The same old rhetoric that Muslims and Dalits need to come together for their social interests. They have the same grievances against the Hindu fascist government and they must come together. But CAA happened, the Dalit and the Muslims, they did not find their interests converging and the fault lines are very clear. Last night, when the attack on a Dalit MLA happened, the same question is now being asked. How much idea of that unity is really there? This takes me back to a statement Sheila Rashid made. She said if the Dalit Muslims have to come together, there should be reservation for Dalit Muslims. Now, that was some of an eerie statement to make because if my memory serves me right, Dalits converted or embraced Islam. I won't say they converted forcefully. They embraced it, uh, the idea of Islam or the religion of Islam because they were segregated. They were uh, acted against in the Hindu caste structure. So where does this idea of Dalit Muslims really come from? Either they can be Dalits within the Hindu caste structure or they are Muslims. So how does these two things match? They don't. But why do they want reservations for Dalit Muslims? Because that's how Muslims can eat into the reservation share of the Dalit society. That's what is happening. And these instances, these number of instances show the fault lines between the Dalit Muslim unity, the sham it is. It, they showcase these, uh, uh, the sham it is. And I've just listed out a very few instances. If you go on the internet, dig up further, there'll be a number of cases that will come up. But somehow they never make it to the mainstream media. Why? Because the mainstream media wants to use this narrative against the BJP, which they're very much against. But let's not leave it to the mainstream media. I won't just blame the mainstream media. How much credible is this idea? Uh, in 2016, just before the UP elections, a BJP leader, he made this statement that the Dalit Muslim unity is an idea that is not sustainable. It cannot go on forever. Now, people were quite angry, especially in the mainstream media, even Dalit leaders for that fact, that why are you discouraging the idea of uh, a Dalit Muslim unity? Are you afraid of the votes banks and all that kind of rhetoric followed? But let's take a, let's go a little beyond India. Let's go to Pakistan. More than 80% of the Hindus in Pakistan are Dalits. What is their condition today? They are struggling for a life there. They're struggling to make two ends meet there. The segregation is open. The violence against them, against their daughters, against their mothers, against their sisters, it's out in the open. If they are not raped or married, they're forcefully converted and then perhaps married off to Muslim men. This is the kind of violence that has followed Dalits in Pakistan for decades and decades now. So if that Dalit Muslim unity could not work out in Pakistan, how is it expected to work out in India? And that is one question the last night events raise. Again, the last night event is not just one isolated event. It's one of the many events that have occurred over and over in time again, along with the number of instances I mentioned in this video. And therefore, we must ask this question to all those leaders from OAC to Chandrasekhar Azad who keep propagating this idea that how much authentic is this idea of Dalit Muslim unity? Or are Muslims now using Dalits to further their interests? This is one question I want to leave with you for today. Thank you.